In the last few weeks of Overwatch League competition, we've seen teams continuously adapt and improve, looking for every possible advantage they can get. In this video, we will be highlighting a couple of these microplays, which might be too small to merit a full-length analysis video, but are no less interesting or important. Fusion has just recaptured the point from the rain, resuming their percentage capture into the 60%. Carpe decides to separate from his team to hide for the rain's next push. Now, this position here is advantageous for both routes down main and top right. If they push main, he waits till they're stacked on the ramp to point and gets a free flank. If they push top right, he could catch them as they drop down. The only way he's cooked is if they decide to push bottom right through the lower hallways. Then his measly roll likely wouldn't be enough to get him out alive. Carpe hears Ash fire poke damage down mid, so he is about to reposition until he hears Rain's Rhine swinging above him. That's the sign of the actual push happening up top with their main tank present. Now, all Carpe has to do is to bide his time until they decide to drop, which is when they're the most vulnerable. The Rain then fully commits with a grab from the top ropes and Carpe re-emerges. He singles out his first squishy to kill and quickly dispatches Erster's May. Before the Rain could even react to his flank, Astro drops beat and joins Carpe in the backline. Massa turns around in an attempt to put pressure on Carpe but gives his life for it. At this point, the Rain have no choice but to retreat down main. To ensure that nobody escapes, Carpe positions himself perpendicular to their getaway route and eliminates Dogman. With both Rain supports down, the tanks crumble shortly after. The push is over and thus the map is lost. Whilst McCree is a glass cannon, his flanking potential left unchecked will be devastating, especially with someone like Carpe at the wheel. With the inclusion of both May and Sigma into the latest meta, a new ult combo utilizing Flux and Blizzard has been making its way into the Overwatch League, and subsequently the rank ladder. While a catchy name is still being decided, the combo is incredibly deadly and effective for a swift team wipe. Here is an example of how the combo can work. The first example is showcased by the Spark, who is defending on second point Paris. The Hunters have decided to wrap around the right side of the point to gain positional advantage on the high ground, and to take less poke damage than if they were to go down main. Taking a look at the ult disparity here, the Hunters have both tank ult and window, which will be perfect for playing aggressively. However, the Spark also have Flux up, with Adora's Blizzard just a few percent away. Compare this to Jinmu's ult meter and there is no contest, and no confirmed follow-up available for Elsa's Flux. The fight begins with some usual poke damage into each other's barriers, before a -ting jumps onto point and begins to capture percentage. The Spark go into this fight with a plan, sending Rhea off on the main choke so he can ult safely without taking shots from Bacon Jack's McCree. Spark uses Window, which procs Elsa to use Flux to counter. Immediately after, Rhea uses Flux on the corner that the Hunters are holding and manages to capture 4. Right after confirming the ultimate, Rhea uses his granted mobility to head onto the flank. Meanwhile on point, Adora throws his blizzard into the radius of the Flux, so they are frozen immediately upon landing. Godsby quickly takes out the immortality field and the spark closes in to finish them off. Now where did Rhea head off to? His flank around the point leads him to a very distracted Bacon Jack, allowing him to rock him and finish him off as well. This leaves only a very lonely Jinmu who is then staggered heavily. Let's now take a look at how a single boop saved the point and potentially a map loss for the shock. There is about 3 minutes left on the clock, and Moth is heading back to Taxi Mei back to the point. However, the fuel doesn't have time to wait, so they begin their push. With a swift TP to point, the shock is grossly outnumbered, 6 to 4. The fuel wastes no time and walls off shock's exit. With no speed boost or May to mitigate all that damage and aggression, the situation is unfavorable for San Francisco. Shock begins their retreat through a small slit beside the May wall, and concedes point presence to the fuel. Cho Hyo Bin lags behind and is frozen and killed, and now Fuel has every right to win this fight. Both Smurf and Violet pop ults in a desperation attempt to buffer their loss of Choi, and it assists in delaying the Fuel's imminent aggression. Smurf lands a huge halt onto Crimzo, and he is eliminated. Here we begin to see the Fuel's mistake. They're so tunneled on Shock running scared that they forego checking their behinds, allowing Rascal and Moth to join the fray. Fuel are now the ones being pincered in from both sides. Moth wall rides onto Bell and manages to boot both Closer and Doha off, who are trying to deal with Rascal's flanking May. The fight is now a 5v3 in favor of the Shock. Needless to say, the remaining fuel members fall to the Shock and the push is ended. The Shock end up full holding them on first, with that one push being the best attempt they had. Moth is always a treat to watch, and this play is no exception. Our fourth and final play is yet another game-winning boop brought to us by Moth. Both the Defiant and Shock have done a full round of King's Row each, and Defiant pushed just short of third point on their second attack round. With roughly only a minute left, winning the teamfight here is crucial for both sides. As the fight begins, Logix gets a huge pick onto Shock's main healer, Violet. Shortly after, Rascal falls because of Defiant's offensive wall. Just like on Hanamura earlier, Shock is down and the enemies have every right to win this fight. 
But Smurf has an idea and instructs Moth to begin getting the high ground. Once Moth is in position, Smurf senses Halt over the pit and manages to grab three. Immediately after they stack up, Moth boops them and careens them into the pit. A perfect alley boop. Now, three of the Defiant have death timers whilst the Shock has their entire team on the way back. The fight is now heavily in Shock's favor, and despite Defiant's best efforts, they are inherently staggered and picked off one by one. And Shock ultimately takes the map. And that's all we have for this episode of Microplace. Did we miss any cool moments that you would like us to break down? Do you want to see more of these types of videos? As always, let us know your thoughts in the comments below.